All right, let's get some clarity now from UAF Commissioner Deboho Maruping. Deboho, thank you very much for your time. So uh, the lawyer there, uh, Mr. Bakhraim, saying that uh, the system is completely useless. What's your response? I think Honorable Bakhraim is, is exaggerating issues here. Mm. Maybe let me start on a, on a lighter note. Myself and Honorable Bakhraim work very closely. Yeah. We've been to interviews together. We've been in radio shows where he actually invited me to come and educate his people. Mm. Secondly, Honorable Bahrim is also part of the Portfolio Committee, where, in fact, last week, the Minister briefed the Portfolio Committee on developments on a number of issues that he's raised, including, I mean, he raised an issue around Tuja. The Minister gave the Portfolio Committee progress on what is happening there. Mm. The Minister gave the Portfolio Committee progress on the uh, PwC project, which looked at re-engineering the fund, because the Minister also realized that URF in its current form, Mm. It needs to migrate into a different form to, res to, to respond appropriately to the needs of the country, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. And in the past three weeks, if I were to give an example, we've introduced a number of measures. Amongst those, we briefed the portfolio committee again, was the USSD as an example. We want to take people away from our queues and we're saying, use the USSD, do everything that you do in our queues, just do it at home. Star 143, star 843, hash, it gives you different options. You don't have to come to our labor centers. We've introduced the UIF app, and we're saying people again, stay away. Use your app. Uh, do your complaints. Do your follow-ups. Do continuation of payments. People who stay in our queues, I think if you look at the 100 that we'll find in our queue, 90% of those people are there either to follow up on their claim, to check uh, the status of their claim, or to do a continuation of payments. And all of these options are available on our USSD and our app. And our apps are zero rated, they are, they are free of charge. You don't have to pay a cent, you don't have to worry about your data, you don't have to, to worry about your airtime. And all of that is available. We briefed the portfolio committee about that. Mm. If I may continue maybe, um, there's an issue around COVID terrorists that uh, UIF has a huge backlog on COVID terrorists. Yeah, what's happening with those? That's, that was my last question, my next question rather. Yeah. Has the UIF actually paid out some of the claims that were made during that difficult time? We've paid 64 billion rands mm. to South Africans. Is during, it all of the claims? That's not all of it. Okay. Now, he spoke about my suspension at some point. Now, th that suspension was as a result of some of the controls deficiencies that were in the system. In fixing the control deficiencies, it also means I cannot pay you if you're not insured. I cannot pay you if you're not in my system. I cannot pay you if your employer has not given us your data. Mm. And if Honorable Pakhrem is saying, Commissioner, pay these people, then he's saying I must continue to perpetrate fraud, and we're not willing to do that. Now, since uh, 17th of August, we've paid over 442 million rands. Mm. And this is us now clearing every single one of these items where we pick up that maybe the company didn't have the, the correct account details. They didn't provide us correct um, information of their employees. We've written to these employees, the employers. We've written to about 200,000 employers. And we said to each employer, you have a unique case in your, in your environment where this and this and this information is missing. Please help us clear this info. Mm. Many of these employers, about... 5,800 of these employers came back and gave us the correct information. We processed, we pay. And as soon as you give us the correct information, we process, we pay. Mm. But I am not going to process any claim where an employer is flagged, is flagged for fraud. Because then we are also perpetrating fraud. We are also not going to process a claim where we pick up that an employer has people who are double dipping. They are picking up uh, different areas where they are collecting contributions, they are collecting money from different sources. Mm. We are not going to continue with those kind of, uh, of processing of those claims. And that's the part of the COVID terrorists yeah. where we so, have not paid. Yeah. So do you know how many are still waiting for their payments? It's about 135,000. Mm. What's happening there? Is, exactly. is it, are they in this category of fraud uh, flagged companies? No, the 135,000, and these are 135 individual cases. These are employees, it's not mm. employers. Okay. Now, these employees, a number of them is predominantly information is incorrect. We've processed it, we've, we've calculated the amount. When you check, when you go to your banking information, it comes back and said, no, the account does not exist. Mm. If you process that payment, it will go to an incorrect account. It's a potential fraud. We've written with the employer, correct your account details, mm. because it needs to match. We need to match with CIPC. If you recall, uh, during the, the initial stages of COVID, 
we had data connection points where we needed to confirm. Mm. So we take your data, we con confirmed with CIPC, we connected with SARS, he mentioned SARS, yeah. in his inputs that we must work with SARS, we are working with SARS. So we take your data, we take it to CIPC, we take it to SARS, we take it to Home Affairs. If these data sources come back and say, nope, there's something wrong, we have, maybe you've applied for someone who's deceased, mm. we treat it as a potential fraud. Because why would you apply for someone who's dead in your pool? Because then the whole pool becomes a suspect. And we need to go through the whole pool and confirm with you what is going on in, in, your, in your pool mm. before we can process the payment. So we have an example here, um, in fact, uh, in, in terms of an employee of ENCA yeah. who went on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. In June, she went to apply uh, at the UIF. Um, it's three months later. She's even come back to work. She doesn't have the money. However, when she looks on the very app that you talk about, yeah. the status says paid. You see, mm. and these are some of the problems that you're encountering. And, and I think for me, I'd like to treat it with an individual, and hopefully she's here. Mm. So by the time I leave here, I can actually understand what is the, what is the issue going on there. Mm. Because in that period, I hope she didn't change her account number. Mm. She didn't update any of her details. Because any change in your detail, we could process it, and she changes an account number, and it goes to the wrong account number. Mm. And that's where we encounter these problems, that people change small details. In their, in their claim process and with that change or they go and when you, when you use a different account number in our system we could process it to the old one yeah. and you've given us a new one or you give us a new one we've processed to the new one you are still expecting it from the old one but each case is unique I think if, if I can get her details and yeah. I can investigate and confirm what exactly is going on here by the time hopefully when I'm coming back here we'll be able to report on her case specifically Mm. And I must say, should I pick up that any of my staff members has, has negligently kept this claim from processing, has kept it on the side, has not done what they're supposed to do, then we are taking consequence management. I mean, we were reporting last week to the portfolio committee that 15 staff members has been disciplined and some of mm. them has been dismissed. Yeah. It's some of these issues that we're dealing with. Was there an issue, I know that you spoke about how it had a detrimental ripple effect on the organization when we saw uh, many executives uh, being placed on suspension, especially during uh, the COVID-19 year yeah. uh, or the year preceding it. With those that you're talking about who are being disciplined, are they those who try to, fraud, to, to um, you know, perpetrate fraud on the system during 2019, 2020, when many people were passing away, etc.? Did you find anything uh, mm -hmm. you know, untoward with some of the organization's workers when it comes to that? Strange enough, when it comes to COVID terrorist payments, yeah. none of our staff members were found, were found to have done anything fraudulent mm. or maladministration. Especially people who let go, okay. Yeah, none of our staff members for, for COVID terrorists. Mm. But for our normal ordinary benefit, we found a couple of people in, the, in, the, in KZN, there are about three people that we've dismissed. We found two people in Northwest, and we also found one person in, um, in the Limpopo area. Mm. These were people who were dealing only with the ordinary benefits. They would go down to people on the streets, help them complete the UR19, mm. and then also collude amongst themselves internally, where it moved from one person to the next to the next. But because they know the system and they're inside, in fact, to an extent that we found that was an ICT person that we picked up, mm. that was also assisting them. And hence, right now, we've introduced a a front-end solution that protects our platform from all these fraudulent activities. We're also able to track if there's, any, some, if there's anything that is happening on our platform that is unusual. This solution that we, we've deployed is able to pick up mm. and alert us and even stop payments where we are picking up things that are unusual on our platform. Mm. Okay, and just lastly, you know, in terms of, I mean, we all know that in South Africa, we are a very unequal society, right? Yeah. Not everybody has access to the internet. Not everybody has access uh, to, for instance, smartphones where you can actually download these apps, etc. cetera. Uh, what do you do in this instance? We have about five mobile buses, big okay. buses. We take these buses to all the locations. Uh, we'll take to the rural of the rural. Mm -hmm. We'll take these buses, and these buses are equipped with free Wi-Fi, just in case 
uh, a grandma or a, 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 a 40 year old does not how to use uh, the tablets but yeah. they have a daughter that can use it they can connect free of charge okay. but the buses go to the centers they go to the townships they go to the rural areas and they go there and they provide services mm. uh, recently we've given um, about 80 percent of our staff members we've given them laptops especially those that can go into the field so before the bus goes out our mobile people, they go into the communities, they engage the communities with their laptops, they capture application, and they also help you to, uh, to clean up, because some of the people, they've, they've applied, but there's gaps in their, um, in their declarations. And because mm -hmm. there's gaps, we need to, take, to work with you and go to the employer, get the information completed, so that you're able to get your full amount that is due to you for the full period. Yeah. Because sometimes we could process for you and you get five friends. Mm. But that's not the intention of, of social security, but to give you the full amount that is due to you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Maruping, for speaking to us here on ENCA. I'll be sure to ask my colleague uh, to probably come into studio and chat to you about her situation. Like you're saying, some yes. of it is individual. So we'll take the opportunity of the fact that you're here as Commissioner of the UIF. Thank you very Thank much. you for your time. That was UIF Commissioner Deboho Maruping. Uh, just asking for a right of reply to what Advocate uh, Bahreim said yesterday to my colleague, Rofua Mazena. He says that the UIF systems are, complete, are in complete disarray.